do you think that Lana Del Rey would love or hate the Chronically Online Girl series? Be honest. Oh my god. Oh my god, I didn't know what does that. Oh my god, it's fake, it's fake, it's completely fake. Oh my god, that's everything. Would Lana Del Rey approve of like my six pack of fake cigarettes from Amazon? Yeah, I accidentally inhaled this earlier. Mm -hmm. Yummy. Lana Del Rey for a chronically online girl video has been so requested, mainly because she is so mysterious and has so much allure and so much lure. We kind of simultaneously know everything about Lana Del Rey because of the songs that she sings, but we simultaneously kind of know nothing about Lana Del Rey. I love that. Also, she's just popping off because of her most recent performance at Coachella. I first learned about Lana Del Rey because of Tumblr back in like 2012, 2013. A lot of people love Lana Del Rey's vibe. Like she's the type of person that a couple would see and go, hey, we saw you across the bar and we really like your vibe. Want to be a third? But she's not looking for a third, okay? She's looking for an older kind of guy, a nice, daddy, if you will. Before I get started into Lana Del Rey lore, I would like to thank today's sponsor, Rocket Money. Thank you so much, Rocket Money, for sponsoring today's video. I cannot tell you how many hours I have wasted on my life trying to cancel certain subscriptions and service memberships. Like, why is it so difficult to cancel a service? It's like they make it hard so that you don't leave. Thankfully, today's sponsor, Rocket Money, is here to help. Rocket Money is the personal finance app that helps you cancel subscriptions, lower bills, and help manage your money better. Rocket Money helps you safely and securely identify reoccurring charges and cancels unwanted subscriptions for you. You can even cancel from within the app with just a couple of taps. No need to worry about customer service calls. Rocket Money has helped its customers save up to $740 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. I have been a Rocket Money customer before even working with them and I can honestly say that it has helped me save so much money and also helped me realize like, oh my God, I have so many subscriptions that I do not know about and I'm accidentally paying for them month to month. Take control of your finances today. Go to rocketmoney.com com slash Nicole Raffi and you can get started with Rocket Money for free. The link will be on screen and also in the description. Thank you, Rocket Money. In case you didn't know, Lana Del Rey's real name is Elizabeth Woolridge Grant. She has been in the scene for a very, very long time. I mean, she is 38 years old. I'm not saying that like, oh my God, she's fucking old. She kind of has had this kind of slow growth yet simultaneous boom. So many people know who Lana Del Rey is yet we don't really know anything about her at the same time, but a lot of people really love her because her sound mixes between pop and rock and alternative and often features dreamy nostalgic melodies and haunting vocals that create a distinct atmosphere. Billie Eilish recently said, This is the reason for happy bitches existence. It's absolutely true. Billie Eilish herself has said that she is very inspired by Lana Del Rey and her voice and her sound. And if you listen to some of Lana Del Rey's older songs, we see where Billie Eilish kind of got her voice from. Lana's lyrics are often about heartbreak and love and nostalgia and of course, Americana. This photo was fucking everywhere all over Tumblr. It was her in like the little American shorts and the little American t-shirt. She was like the human embodiment of July 4th. Sometimes to the point where you're like, is she the human embodiment of January 6th, 2021? Like, I, I'm curious. I, that was like a legitimate concern for a lot of people, <laughs> but we will get into that. And oftentimes when you see Lana, you think of like old Hollywood glamor. She has this very specific aesthetic that kind of sets her apart from other artists. Similar to how like a lot of artists have a certain hairstyle that a lot of people recognize them. Lana has that. A certain sound that people recognize artists with. Lana has that. She has this world building characteristic about her that makes a lot of people really love her. And she's very open about who she has received her inspiration from. She has talked about how Amy Winehouse was a huge inspiration for her. Elvis Presley, her look obviously is very reminiscent of Priscilla Presley. While she is so extremely loved by many, she's actually a pretty controversial figure in a lot of people's eyes. Things from her past, but also kind of semi-present. And it has people feeling very mixed emotions when it comes to Lana Del Rey. Let's get started from the beginning. She was born June 21st, 1985 in Manhattan, New York City. Her father is Robert England Grant. He's an internet millionaire. Like he basically just bought a bunch of website domains and became extremely rich off of that. Why didn't I do that back in like 1999 when I was fresh out the womb? Like why did I not buy all the domains? I don't know and it haunts me to this day. She has a younger sister, Caroline Chuck Grant, and a younger brother named Charlie Grant. When she was a child, she was raised Roman Catholic, which is like not a surprise at all. Like if you look at kind of her aesthetic, it's giving Catholic girl. Like it's definitely giving Catholic girl vibes. I too grew up as a Catholic girl. I don't know what happened to my aesthetic. 
<laughs> so when she was very young, she moved away from New York City, but actually came back in 2005 to pursue music. And her breakthrough was with her song Video Games in 2011. This song had me in such a fucking chokehold, it's not even funny. That was like my thing, to like show guys Lana Del Rey. Show them like video games, show them like Born to Die. Like I was that bitch that you could never listen to. It's you, it's you, it's all for you, everything I do. You could not listen to that without thinking of me. And I was like fully just like a seventh grader, but I had very evil intentions with a very like evil and sinister heart. And I hope that I ruined Lana Del Rey for many boys. So Lana has been pretty open and talked about how from a pretty young age, she has had mortality issues, like severe anxiety about the thought of dying one day. I feel that, I fucking feel that. She like did not understand how people around her were just okay with the idea of dying one day and that she was gonna die, her mother was gonna die, her father was gonna die, her siblings were gonna die, everyone around her was essentially going to die and had a really hard time dealing with that. And that's when she started really getting into drinking at an early age. We're talking like 13, 14, 15. Her uncle actually helped her get into a boarding school, which kind of helped her with getting sober and stop drinking. In the start of her career, she used some different stage names at first, like her actual government name. She also went by May Jailer. Lana Del Rey sounds a lot prettier, no offense. She also lived on Long Island and became a waitress. Don't you worry, we will get into the Waffle House lore. It was like either this was gonna be my outfit for this video or I was gonna be in like full Waffle House gear. I kind of regret not doing the Waffle House route because this took me way too long. I mean, I'm just kidding, this happened all so fast. Like I didn't even have to try to look like this, it just came so naturally to me. So when she was 19, she majored in philosophy with an emphasis on metaphysics at Fordham University. She had this really strong interest in bridging the gap between God and science. In 2008, she released the EP Kill Kill under her name, Lizzie Grant. So like I said, she went by different names before it was actually officially Lana Del Rey. It actually used to be the spelling of R-A-Y before it was R-E-Y. The inspiration behind Lana Del Rey came from the glamour of Miami Seaside, Spanish influence, and actress Lana Turner and Ford Del Rey sedan which is a very cute like story on how she has gotten her name. And her father was actually very helpful when it came to her debut album with marketing it. And video games gained over 20 million YouTube views in the first five months that it was out, which is like no small feat, especially back in 2011. It won Song of the Decade at the Q Awards in London. And that is when her career really started to boom. I would say that Lana Del Rey was not yet a household name, but definitely a name that you would recognize if you were chronically online. If you were on Tumblr in the early 2010s, if you were being born in the early 2010s, I don't wanna fucking hear it. There was this photo with Lana Del Rey with a B on her lips. And that was like such a popular photo on Tumblr. It got so many notes and like reblogs and everything. I initially started hearing a lot about Lana Del Rey, even more so than just her music because of Orion Carlotto. She was very, very, very big on Tumblr. There was this like famous photo that came out of Orion and Lana Del Rey kissing. And I was like, oh my God. God. Orion is that fucking girl. Like, she can do no wrong. Like, of course, her fucking favorite celebrity is kissing her on the lips and has expressed a lot of inspiration from her. There was like this time in early 2010s Tumblr where a lot of people were very obsessed with like Beyonce, Lana Del Rey, the mean girl. There was kind of just this like royalty placed on certain celebrities at this time, especially on Tumblr, and Lana Del Rey happened to be one of them. A lot of people just assumed at first that she was like some random woman from the 50s and that she was like just suddenly getting popular on Tumblr. And her music style and her lyrics suited Tumblr's aesthetic. Like you could just find any photo on the internet with like a galaxy and then Lana Del Rey lyrics on top. Like it's you, it's you, it's all for you, everything I do. We were born to die. Suicidal, existential young teens on Tumblr love that shit, myself included. Because it appeals to sad and angsty teenage girls, the primary users of that platform. Hi, she also totally inspired the whole Lolita aesthetic that was going on on Tumblr and is still around to this day. Sugar daddies, older men, old money, red heart-shaped sunglasses, the high-waisted, like studded shorts, American apparel. And because of her aesthetic and her photos, trending all around Tumblr. It actually caught notice of The Weeknd, who had actually requested that the BBC One add video games to their playlist. This is kind of when criticism started to emerge about her career and her music, such as accusations of glamorizing abuse with the blue jean single cover art depicting a man choking her. Billie Eilish recently posted this on her story, and I was like, 
hmm, I wonder what this means. And then she was brought out to sing with Lana at Coachella. Also, other controversial moments were brought up in music videos, like wearing a full Native American headdress in the ride video, and also appropriating Latino gangster culture in the Tropico short film. One of her other very early controversies was her kissing her sister. <laughs> I'm not laughing. Well, it's well, it's kind of funny. Lana Del Rey also kissed her sister. That ended up being controversial. Her sister looks a lot like Jennifer Lawrence and people were excited. They're like, oh my God, Lana Del Rey and Jennifer Lawrence are kissing. This is everything. And it turned out to be Lana Del Rey's sister. I just kind of have a list of controversies that are like one after another. She also expresses her disinterest in feminism in June, 2014. She says that she prefers topics like SpaceX, Tesla, and intergalactic possibilities. Kind of sounds like someone who we've talked about before. Hmm. If I saw Lana Del Rey and Elon Musk together in a room, that would actually like do something very horrible to me. Like I don't ever want to see those two interact. And there might be photos of them interacting together. And I really hope that there aren't. Those two people need to stay far, far, far away from each other. If news comes out about Lana Del Rey and Elon Musk dating in the next few years, I'm not going to be around. Don't talk to me. I will be feeling very sensitive. Also, Lord spoke out in an interview that she finds that Lana Del Rey's themes in her songs and in her music videos are very, very unhealthy for young girls. So let's talk about her controversy with Azealia Banks. I hear you guys. I really want to do a video on Azealia Banks too. That is like a whole dissertation. Like I need to take off from life in order to make an Azealia Banks video because I don't even know if I have enough wall space. So please bear with me. I, I hear you about the Azealia Banks lore. This fight started off with Kanye West, okay? So Kanye West wore the red Make America Great Again hat for the first time, sparking controversy. And Lana Del Rey criticized him of his support for Trump, calling it a loss for the culture. So Kanye West states, this represents good and America becoming whole again. We will no longer outsource to other countries. We build factories here in America and create jobs. We'll provide jobs for all who are free from prisons as we abolish the 13th Amendment message sent with love. As to Lana Del Rey then responded, Trump becoming our president was a loss for the country, but your support of him is a loss for the culture. I can only assume you relate to his personality on some level. Delusions of grandeur, extreme issues with narcissism, none of which would be a talking point if we weren't speaking about the man leading our country. If you think it's all right to support someone who believes it's okay to grab a woman by the pussy just because he's famous, then you need an intervention as much as he does, something so many narcissists will never get because there just isn't enough help for the issue. Message sent with concern that will never be addressed. So Azealia Banks decides to come for Lana Del Rey then saying that she has a privileged standpoint in the political debacle and criticized her stance on the issue. This is like no real surprise though. Azealia Banks isn't known for like the best takes, you know what I mean? But she will always have a take. That's something she'll always have. Well, Azealia Banks kind of is like the Trisha Paytas of like the celebrity world. And speaking of Trisha Paytas, it's crazy that she inspired like Lana Del Rey's whole album and song. Did you know that there's a bridge under Ocean Boulevard. Trisha had her own version of that, which is watering the grapes in my vineyard. Trisha and Lana have actually had some, I shouldn't say interactions, that's not like the right word, but Lana was like encouraged to check out Trisha Paytas and go on her podcast. Trisha? Is someone I should check out? Okay, I will, I will. And Trisha also was trying to get Lana Del Rey onto the podcast and, and was asking questions about it on Twitter. Anyway. Lana Del Rey has really? an album called Chemtrails Over the Country Club. Ooh. Wait, really? Yeah. That sounds like a meme that people would say. It sounds like a Lana album. <laughs> Chemtrails over the country club. Wow. And we live in our country club, so maybe she talked about us. Azealia Banks tweeted at the time, to me, this just looks like a typical white woman taking, using a weekend target to pretend to be an ally. And the fight further escalated when Azealia Banks threatened to burn down Lana Del Rey's house with hashtag Azealia Voodoo. Mm -hmm. Honestly, you know the big bad witch is smarter than that. When her house mysteriously goes up in flames while she's asleep inside, I just want to see as many hashtag Azalea Voodoo hashtags as possible, she wrote on Twitter. Artists then tore each other apart for their appearances, from Banks pointing out her pointy Michael Jackson nose and recommending an NSFW workout to Lana Del Rey, suggesting that she sees a psychiatrist since her psych meds aren't working. Like, it's very real and it's very crazy to see. So despite Lana Del Rey's album, Norman Fucking Rockwell, being number three on the Billboard 200 and receiving two Grammy nominations, the album did face criticism from NPR's music critic and Powers and Lana Del Rey did not like that and did not appreciate it. Powers describes Lana Del Rey's artistic persona as a bad girl to whom bad things are done with uncooked 
lyrics. Von Del Rey emphasized her warmth and self-reflection as her strengths, rejecting the notion of bold political or cultural statements. And Lana Del Rey and how she kind of deals with criticism and feeling kind of like a victim to this criticism definitely did give her a lot of backlash in May 2020. She wrote this whole big old thing on Instagram called Question for the Culture, in which she says, now that Doja Cat, Ariana, Camila, Cardi B, Kehlani, and Nicki Minaj, and Beyonce have had number ones with songs about being sexy, wearing no clothes, fucking, cheating, etc. Can I please go back to singing about being embodied, feeling beautiful by being in love, even if the relationship is not perfect, or dancing for money, or whatever I want without being crucified or saying that I'm glamorizing abuse. I'm fed up with female writers and alt singers saying that I glamorize abuse when in reality I'm just a glamorous person singing about the realities that we are all seeing are very prevalent emotionally abusive relationships all over the world. So it's important to know that Lana Del Rey's lyrics and songs like Ultra Violence and Off to the Races have faced criticism for perpetuating outdated gender norms and glamorizing abuse. A lot of people were like, what are you talking about? Like when she posted this, this just seems so random. And also why call out a whole bunch of women, especially a majority who are women of color, kind of in this way to uplift yourself and being like, so can I go back to making music about feeling beautiful and not about being naked and sexy and twerking? Like, can I do that? Lana said there has to be a place in feminism for women who look and act like me, which is a very crazy statement to say as a cis white woman. There needs to be feminism for people like me. Girlie, that's, that's who feminism originally was made for. Lana Del Rey was trying to express her frustration that the exploration of submissive or passive roles in relationships has been perceived as setting women back despite intending to depict prevalent abusive relationships. She defends herself against accusations of glamorizing abuse, asserting that she is simply portraying the realities of abusive relationships worldwide. You cannot lie though, it is a very romanticized version of that all because to a certain extent she has glamorized and romanticized abusive relationships and made a career off of that despite how much she wants to say that she did it. Lana then makes another post which says a couple of final notes on my controversial post that's not controversial at all. Despite the feedback I've heard from several people that I mentioned in a complimentary way, whether it be Ariana or Doja Cat, I want to say that I remain firm in my clarity and stance and what that I was writing about was the importance of self-advocacy for the more delicate and often dismissed softer female personality and that there does have to be room for that type in which will inevitably become the new third wave of feminism that is rapidly approaching. Watch. That is a very big issue issue for you to name mostly women of color in your poll post and then being like but where is the feminism for women like me like the softer more delicate woman what do you mean by that lana what do you mean by that <laughs> lana del rey then goes on video to further clarify her controversial instagram post that landed her in hot waters the difference is when i get on a poll people call me a whore but when fk twigs gets on a poll it's art. Lana swears up and down. Don't ever, ever, ever call me racist. The singers I mentioned are my favorite singers. So if you want to try and make a bone to pick out of that, like you always do, be my guest. It doesn't change the fact that I haven't had the same opportunity to express what I want to express without being completely decimated. If you want to say that that has something to do with race, that's your opinion, but that's not what I was saying. However, Lana completely ignoring the criticism that these artists, especially the ones that she has named, have faced for being comfortable in their sexuality being open about certain topics in songs was kind of strange because she's kind of acting like these women are like skating by with no issue and do not face any criticism and are not called awful, terrible names. And the public perception of them is already, you know, very difficult enough to deal with on top of that, the racism that comes with it. That was very weird of Lana to do, honestly. Then later in October, 2020, Lana Del Rey decides to wear a mesh face mask. In October, 2020, COVID was really fucking bad, okay? We were not like, on the mend, okay? Like things were not getting better. If anything, we were like in the peak of when it was like at its absolute fucking worst. And then here she goes with this mesh face mask. So many of her fans came online and they're like, it is becoming so hard to defend you. Like you are making it so extremely difficult right now. Lana responds to the criticism about her mesh mask, stating that it had plastic on the inside, commonly sewn in by stylists, and saying that she usually doesn't respond to articles like this, but clarifies the situation. This was a very difficult time for her fans because it was like, shit, you are becoming very difficult to defend Lana. Not only that, but we were also going through the elections and a lot of people were kind of unsure about where Lana stood with her political views, especially because her choice in masking was 
questionable. So when it comes to the mask, Lana Del Rey said that she wasn't really having time to kind of respond about her political beliefs because she was busy working on two albums and also donating a million dollars throughout the nation. But she did tweet about using witchcraft to take down Donald Trump. <laughs> Lana Del Rey mysterious tweets on Thursday references specific dates aligned with the lunar calendar's waning crescent moon ritual dates. Occultists note that on these dates, practitioners of witchcraft gather for the mass rituals aimed at removing Donald Trump from the Oval Office. And Del Rey's representatives confirm her support for these efforts, detailing the required ingredients for the ritual, including items like an unflattering photo of Trump and a tower tarot card. On TikTok especially, her necklace starts trending. It's a golden heart that unscrews into a small spoon and it gained a lot of popularity on TikTok, reminiscent of a similar necklace worn in the movie Cruel Intentions. The spoon is definitely made for, you know, if you don't have a spoon out in public, like if you're at a restaurant and like you don't have utensils, oh no, like what are you going to do? Or if you need to eat in your car, like that is definitely what the small spoon is intended for. Everyone and their mom really wanted the tiny spoon and were searching far and wide. How do I get the tiny spoon? How do I get the tiny spoon? Lana says that it doesn't have any connection to the movie. And on some like Lana Del Rey fan forums, some users recall the necklace being available for purchase at merchandise stands as far back as 2015 during Lana Del Rey's endless summer tour. TikTok videos with the Lana Del Rey necklace have gained a lot of views because it's the Lana Del Rey Coke necklace, okay? People are selling it for hundreds, if not thousands, online. Also, eBay, Amazon, Etsy has kind of knockoffs of it, but that is very unique merch that Lana has come out with. So two days after Lana Del Rey was announced as a headliner for Coachella, she also becomes the new face for the Skims Valentine's Day launch. This was big because Lana Del Rey and Kim Kardashian's aesthetics are very different from one another. Skims itself is like seen as kind of like this minimalist, like new tones. And Lana Del Rey brought this like sexy, cute, coquette type of aesthetic to it, which brought in a lot of new fans and a lot of new customers, obviously. And following the release of the campaign, Lana Del Rey's involvement reportedly garnered Skims a whopping $13.7 million in media exposure. They were honestly very, very beautiful photos that Lana had, like people were very fucking excited. Cause when you do think of Valentine's Day, you do kind of think like Lana Del Rey really does fit the theme and the aesthetic of it all, especially the old vintage Hollywood kind of look of Valentine's Day, the Waffle House. What was she doing there? A bunch of people started posting photos like, oh my God, Lana Del Rey is working inside a Waffle House. Oh my God, Lana Del Rey can't afford her bills. Oh my God, she's working inside a Waffle House because she was in uniform with name tag, pouring coffee and all. Lana confirmed in an interview with The Hollywood Reporter that she was just given a name tag and a uniform because she just happened to be there and that the owners liked her. I really like that Lana Del Rey and Waffle House are now associated with one another because they do kind of give off the same, same vibe. Someone like brought a poster and they were like, yeah, I, I stole this. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Did you have this? Or did you yes, just print it? Yes, I had it. it. I got she it stole it from a snipe in San Francisco when they were putting Ellie Goulding up over it. And then a fan wants her to sign her arm and sees like just a scar on her arm. And Lana Del Rey then says, You've been chopping it up. Is she chopping it up over me? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Is chopping it up? Is she chopping it up over me? No, ma'am. No, <laughs> so cute. What am I going to do with you guys? Oh, my God. Everyone here is so cute. You've been chopping it up. You've been chopping it up in reference to her arm and her scars. Thankfully, the person that I happened to had a very good sense of humor about it and was like, no, ma'am. That just sounds like a Lana Del Rey thing to be like, you chopping it up. Hey, you chopping it up. At the 2024 Grammys, Lana Del Rey was nominated for Album of the Year. She has not won any Grammys and a lot of fans were really hoping that like, this was gonna be her year for that. However, a lot of people ended up being actually very disappointed with Taylor Swift, who has a song with Lana Del Rey, Snow on the Beach. Lana Del Rey and Taylor actually have the same producer, Jack Antonoff. Lana helped write the song, Margaret, for Jack Antonoff's wife, Margaret Qualey. A lot of people were upset that Taylor Swift did not like really acknowledge Celine Dion at the Grammys, and they were upset with how she handled the situation. And we're also upset that when Taylor Swift won album of the year, brought Lana Del Rey on stage because it kind of seemed like she didn't really want to be there and she was like kind of disappointed that she hadn't won and had to watch her friend win as 
Taylor's like dragging her up on the stage for Taylor's award. However, Lana Del Rey says that she did not feel one negative emotion and that she just enjoyed the event and loved being able to get dressed up and have fun and did not feel any negativity at all. She most recently came out for Coachella 2024. Weekend one, she'll also be at weekend two. She brought out Billie Eilish for a duet of Billie Eilish's song, Ocean Eyes, during her headlining set. And Lana Del Rey praised Billie Eilish, calling her the voice of our generation. I did make a whole chronically online video also for Billie Eilish, if anyone's interested in that. And then Billie and Lana also did a duet of the song Video Games, which a lot of people said that she really ate Lana up with that, like that she sang it better than Lana did. However, Lana's set was like kind of a highlight for a lot of people of Coachella Weekend One. Her entrance and her outro was like on a motorcycle and it was very beautiful, honestly. It's also been 10 years since she made her Coachella debut. And Lana kind of brought this like new aesthetic to Coachella flower crowns. Like when you see a flower crown, you think of two things, which is Coachella and Lana Del Rey. Although so many people loved her performance and it's like the videos are everywhere all over the internet because of how beautiful it really was. Critics noted that her downbeat energy and underpowered vocals, describing it as a disappointingly lifeless start to the festival. Lana is not really a stranger to receiving criticism for live performances. Her SNL debut performance has received so much flack. It's like almost like a meme. Fans either like defend it with their life or they're like, oh my fucking God, like why did you do that? Something else that I will say that I noticed a lot about her Coachella performance is that the comments about her body are starting again, which is so prevalent for Lana. Every single time Lana makes a public appearance, especially after not being seen for a while, she gets so many comments on her body, but the comments that have been made about her gaining weight are really awful and disgusting. There was a lot of posts being made about how like, we miss the old Lana, we miss the old Lana aesthetic, we miss when she was skinny, comparing her to a mom because now her outfits and her style have changed. There's also this like famous paparazzi video when they criticized her for wearing like a white t-shirt and blue jeans as if she doesn't have a song about it. You want to say anything with it? That video? Yeah. I wonder if I can even touch this. Point is, a lot of female entertainers have to deal with this, unfortunately, is the comments about her body. But it's really sad to see that now that, you know, she was performing at Coachella, seemingly looks different now that a lot of the comments now are like, oh my God, I need Ozempic. She looks so good. Lana's back. Like that seems to be the thing that everyone is saying. Lana's back or Lana Del Rey is back. Oh, she's so back. She looks so good. She looks so beautiful simply because she had lost weight. It's extremely harmful for like very obvious reasons. I thought that we learned not to talk about people's bodies. When she was like really popping off on Tumblr, it was really bad back then. Like it was really tough. Like Thinspo was everywhere. There were pro Anna Tumblr pages everywhere. And then it seemed like we as a collective kind of got better, you know? And I was like, okay, we're heading in the right direction. And then now somehow like when she's making her big resurgence back with music, it seems like she can't escape it once again because there is this resurgence of fat phobia. It's just so fucking weird. And, and I really hope that these comments don't affect her too much because I feel like the comments should have been way more focused on her performance and her voice at Coachella rather than what her body looks like. That seems to be like the least interesting part of it all. I will say another kind of like least interesting part of Lana Del Rey is the people that she dates, which I think is is very true for a lot of women. Like that's kind of the thing that I care the least about is like who the hell you're dating. The girl's so interesting and then there's him. Like she's Barbie and then Ken's just there. But Lana Del Rey does kind of have a funny history with some men in her life and can definitely be pretty catty and funny when it comes to things. Like for example, Lana Del Rey posted a billboard for did you know that there is a bridge under Ocean Boulevard? Only in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the only one. And that just happens to be where her ex, Sean Sticks Larkin happens to live. Also during a concert in London's BST Hyde Park, Lana changed some of her lyrics in her song Chemtrails Over the Country Club, seemingly shading her ex, Sean Larkin, implying that Larkin and got married to someone else before their relationship officially had ended. She's saying he's born in December and he got married when we were still together. He's born in December and he got married while we were in couples therapy together. And people have speculated that the song is about Larkin because his birthday is in December. Lana and Larkin dated from fall 2019 to March 2020 and Larkin married Carrie Godot in January 2022. She also happened to announce her album, Did You Know That There's a Tunnel Under Ocean Boulevard? I think I've been saying, did you know that there's a bridge under Ocean Boulevard? My fucking bad. She 
also announced her album. Did you know that there's a tunnel under Ocean Boulevard on Larkin's birthday last year? That's a lot of words for a title, okay? Like, you can't judge me. Like, watering the grapes in my vineyard. A little bit easier to remember than there is a tunnel under Ocean Boulevard. Or did you know? Sorry, my bad. However, Lana Del Rey was with a man named Jack Donahue, and they confirmed their rumored relationship with Lana on an Instagram with photos outside Chicago's Cook County Jail, captioned family visit. This man was so fun. Loved seeing her with a man with like a Polish hat. I was like, oh my God, go Polska. They're gonna have little Polish babies together. But after the photos were posted on Pop Crave on Twitter, her fans started pulling out photos from his Instagram, which showed him kissing men as if like bi men don't exist. There was a lot of very sensitive people about seeing a very attractive man kissing other attractive men and then going on to date Lana Del Rey. All of this to say, Lana Del Rey is a very kind of mysterious woman. And I think that's part of the allure with her. A lot of people are like, I don't get it. I don't understand. Like, I don't get the appeal with her. She does have a very alluring voice. She has beautiful music. People like the aesthetic and world building that she has brought to life. This whole like old money Lolita coquette girl that she, you know, kind of has made into her aesthetic and her own while simultaneously like not being that at the same time like people are so shocked when they see her in regular clothes and like jeans and like things from the mall but it's like forgetting that she is a regular person and also kind of has this you know persona when she is singing and goes on stage because no one's gonna be a fucking coquette little monster all the fucking time you know speaking of which she has a song about lady gaga but anyway people also like that she's not necessarily trying to be a pop star she likes kind of like remaining underground even though she's very much so mainstream she often gets compared to amy winehouse hrh collection trisha paytas julia fox she vapes people love lana and her vape while simultaneously having this like old hollywood glamour aesthetic and i do think that some people are also attracted to her because of her controversies people not really knowing where she stands politically or what her her stances and her views on things kind of make her easy to like for some people because some people are like, I like that. I like that she's not political. I like that she's not opinionated. Some people really enjoy that. While it's also really difficult for a lot of people to be fans of her because they're like, I don't agree with some of the things that she said and some of the things that she has said or done are very harmful and hurtful to various different communities. So I think overall people have a very mixed emotion about Lana Del Rey, but it seems that she is like on the good side of a lot of people who are very mainstream within the industry. So even though Lana's been around for a while and is gonna continue to be around for a while like her career is not going anywhere and she's continuing to make music I think that she's always going to kind of be like under the radar in the sense that she is never going to want to be this like mega pop star where she is constantly in the spotlight and I think that makes her more appealing than some other celebrities and who knows maybe we'll see Lana Del Rey on Just Trish I just can't imagine Lana Del Rey though talking for like an hour straight or two hours or three hours with Trisha Paytas like for that long of a time would I like to see it maybe I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna happen. Anyway, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope that you guys liked it. If you did, please make sure that you leave it a like. It helps me out so much. Also, leave a comment on anything that I missed out. I'm sure I did because there is so much to Lana Del Rey's career. She's been in the game for so many years. It's impossible to fit literally every single thing on this wall. So please leave it in the comments down below. Make sure that you subscribe if you want to be asked. If not, you're disgusting. Also, make sure I have your bell notifications on so you know every single time I post or else you are gross. If you want to follow me on my other social media, Instagram, Twitter, Deepop, Spotify, it's just at Nicole Raffi. And if you want to follow me on my TikTok, it's at Nikki Nasty. I have merch and I also have a podcast that comes out every other Monday. You know the video's ending when well, the lashes are off. Bye! Bye.